I'm here with three former residents of historic Belmont Heights, the neighborhood that we are celebrating with the reunion each year. The first reunion was in 2023, the second reunion, 2024, on May the 4th. And the reunion will be at the Cyrus Green Recreation Center in historic Belmont Heights. So we have three people who are gonna talk about their memories of the neighborhood, a little bit about their family, and we're gonna start with Ellen, and what do you remember most about historic Belmont Heights? Oh, there's so much to tell about Belmont Heights. We don't have enough time. <clears throat> but growing up, I grew up in Belmont Heights. I was born in 1953, so all of my life was in Belmont Heights. Um, my brother was on earlier, but I have to make a correction. Uh, my name is Marani, but back then, you went with whatever the teacher said. The teacher says, oh, no, you don't pronounce that that way because it's a very odd spelling. That spelling is meringue. How they come up with that, I don't know, but that's what we went with. So we, I'm known as Marani sometimes and meringue. But I, I, I went to College Hill um, Elementary School, which was less than um, three minutes to walk to, to school. But what I remember about Mr. Um, Lockhart was that my father was killed in 1964. And um, the community uh, supported us so much till the, the school, the, my sister was a, a patrol, and the patrolman would um, come to the house. They put on their little badge and whatnot and paraded down to my mother's house and uh, brought food and whatnot, and you would never see that happen now. But it was a village. I remember uh, my mother was the president of PTA for those six years that we were there. And during that time, we had to roll the windows up and use fans in, in the classrooms. And they raised some money, and the principal wanted to get air conditioning for his office. And my mother said, oh, no, no, that will never happen. Um, not when my children are going to be sitting in a hot room and he's in the air conditioning. And they didn't do that. So we um, took that money and we did something that would benefit the whole elementary school. I remember planting a maypole and and pronto puffs, and we had big uh, carnivals and whatnot in the back of the school. And uh, it was just a wonderful time. Um, in Ebor, in um, Belma Heights, we had everything we needed. We had the pharmacy. We had a grocery store. We had uh, churches that we could walk to, the Mennonite Church, the Baptist Church. We just had everything. We even had... Um, I don't know, the girls probably can remember. We had an ice cream truck. Well, it really wasn't a truck. It was on a bicycle. He was on a bicycle, and it had this big square freezer in the back. And he would roll that bicycle through the neighborhood, and we would all fall out with our little pennies buying ice cream and whatnot. But it was just so, so much fun to grow up in Velma Heights. We had the pool. We had everything, grocery store, everything that you can imagine we had there. And the neighborhood, I remember going to, um, we would, when they built the, Ellen, the um, junior high school, Young, they had a ditch right behind um, College Hill. And sometimes we didn't want to walk around to get to the front of the school. We'd cross the ditch. And I was a little chubby girl, and I couldn't make it sometimes. I would try to jump across that ditch, and my feet would get all messed up in the mud and whatnot. And then Ed Cooper one day found some boards, and he said, hey, we're going to put this board across this here so you can just walk across the ditch. And uh, But everybody looked out for everybody, and um, if I was going through the um, neighborhood that didn't speak, by the time I got home, my mother would get a phone call saying, hey, you know your daughter didn't wave or say hello on the way. 
on the way home, but it took a village, and that village inspired <clears throat> and did everything. I love it. And I, I want the people of Tampa to know how precious Bellman Height is and was and still is. Ellen, you reminded me when you talked about that ditch. <laughs> I think all of us tried to cross that <laughs> ditch at one time or the other. And we had a, a fish when I was in uh, fourth grade at College Hill Elementary School, and we used to get water from the ditch to put in the fish bowl. And that was my job, to go get water out of the ditch. And I slipped one day and fell in that ditch. I had to go home and change my pants, my underwear, and everything else. <laughs> but I had to go back to school. That didn't ex excuse me all day. So, Patsy, some of your memory. You were showing us some photos earlier today. Tell us about those photos. Well, I remember those photos were about um, in elementary school at College Hill. And that was during a coronation, I think is what they called it. Mm -hmm. So what happened was parents would raise money in order the money was uh, going to benefit the school. The money, 100% mm -hmm. of it went to the schools. And that's how they supported different activities we had, like that coronation. And they'd have a king and a queen in their court. And it was a, uh, it, it was what the parents did. They organized themselves. Uh, I remember ladies' groups and men's groups, I'm saying of the adult parents, and they had groups and they had socials and they would do different activities. I don't really know everything that they did, but they do have different activities from selling food and then having parties and the benefit, the money that they raised would go for the children. So you, at that time, you didn't see children on the corner for, you know, we need to get money for the football uh, uniforms, because I heard Mr. Moran say some, there would be some businessman in the community that supported and sponsored that. And um, so that was the same thing with, with anything we did, like the coronations. And one of the things that uh, I remember about being the crossing guard during the time the being the crossing guard mm -hmm. during the, that time we didn't have adults that were crossing guards it was the children that if you show responsibility to a teacher and you had good conduct then you may get selected to be a crossing guard which means you might get to leave class five minutes early to get out there <laughs> and get ready for the students being dismissed from school so I remember that being a good thing and I remember um, being a Girl Scout, and that was part of uh, the community coming together, and it gave us something to do uh, in crafts, arts and crafts that we did, field trips that we did. And I'll say one of the things I remember, my early times of being, uh, being what can I say, like a business-minded, was when it was, I was a Girl Scout, and my mother was the Girl Scout leader. And I remember when it was coming up time to sell cookies, because if you sold the most cookies, the most mm -hmm. cookies, then you would get, during that time, you would get a, a week summer camp trip, a week to a camp. Your parents, my mother couldn't afford for me to go to a summer camp, so I knew I had to try to sell some cookies <laughs> if I wanted to win to get that trip. So what I would do was... During that time, there wasn't any cell phones and all that, so my mother had a little black book with all her friends' names and numbers in it. So I'd go in her purse and get her black book, and I'd go down and I'd call everybody and say, Hello, this is Patsy. I'm Miss Bird's daughter, and <laughs> cookie time is coming up, and I'd like to know if you would like to buy cookies for me. And it's going to be on this time, you know, that they're going to be coming. <laughs> and how many boxes would you like to get? <laughs> so I go down the whole list. By the time the cookies came out, I had a big list of people who had already obligated themselves <laughs> to buy cookies for me. So if they end up seeing some of the other girls on the streets at uh, later on the weekend selling cookies, sometimes if they had extra money, they would buy cookies but if they didn't, they would say, I'm sorry, I've already obligated yes, to buy a box of cookies from Patsy. Yes. So I remember that as a, a lot of fun. Patsy, people really supported each other, and the children 
And uh, this is one thing I want to mention uh, before, Cynthia, we get your memories, but I was a member of the band uh, from second grade on, and when we got to Middleton High School, we were raising money to get new uniforms. We hadn't had uniforms in many, many years, long before I got there. Gladiolas and world's finest chocolate. That's how we raised the money. And all the people in Belmont Heights supported us. They bought those gladiolas, mm -hmm. they bought that candy, and we got new uniforms by my senior year. <laughs> Cynthia, what are some of your memories? Well, I want to start off with the fact that I am number eight uh, in my family. My parents had eight girls, and I'm the baby. And um, I was the one who told on everybody when they did something <laughs> wrong. Um, I didn't do much with my older sisters because by the time I came into the world, uh, Betty was the oldest, was getting ready to go to college at FAMU. And we, my parents were so pushing us to do, exceed in whatever we did. And uh, I just want to talk about my next door neighbor who was over the um, College Hill, which was Mr. Harris, Howard Harris. He lived next door and he was the um, curator. Is, is that a good name? Manager. 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 He was the manager of uh, College Hill. And I came into the new part of College Hill. Uh, my older sisters, they all were in the older part of College Hill. But um, just growing up uh, during that time, uh, when I was born, uh, his daughter fell in love with me. Her name was Ozefa. So that's why I use her name all the time. But she cared for me. She did so much. Would give me little toys uh, for Christmas. And I was always, I really loved this little elephant that used to blow bubbles. And my sister Ollie, who was next door to me, was jealous. She wanted that. Uh, it should have been her gift. But uh, one day I came in and my little um, elephant didn't blow bubbles anymore <laughs> because she had broken it. But those are some of the small, uh, the funny things. Uh, we grew up with the fact that our parents had us rigid on everything that we did every day. Uh, I can remember when we got our first washing machine because before then we was washing in the, the kitchen sink our clothes and all that and putting putting them on the line but when we got that washing machine it was one of those that roll you had to roll it it rolled and Shirley got her hand stuck <laughs> in the uh, little uh, thing that turns around mm -hmm. so that was some lightning things in our family other things that I want to talk about was hurricanes when the hurricanes came that was a time of joy we had so much fun just we would take uh, oranges or uh, grapefruits and roll them across the, <laughs> the table. Those were fun things that we did. Even though um, uh, we used to, my dad used to love to play uh, music and we would dance. My older sisters would dance all the time. Um, and we did a lot of things together. We were just, uh, just raised that way that we would have to be respectful. Number one, we had the uh, neighborhood watch was Miss Willie. Miss Willie smoked a cigar. She didn't smoke it. She just chewed on this cigar all day <laughs> long. But she was the watchdog for everybody. When you got out of uh, elementary school, you were walking down. She said, now get in the house and I'll be over there to make sure everything is all right uh, till your mom and dad comes home. And she would walk out the back door, wait on the other kids. And in, my, in our area, it was uh, the Coopers, we had um, uh, Miss Willie and her family, uh, Ozefa, the uh, Ozefa Harris, and then from there, um, we had another um, lady that moved in with her son and two children. It was a son, a daughter, two boys, I think, two boys and one daughter, uh, Michael, um, and they lived next door after Mr. Harris had. Uh, moved to the building that he was in. Um, but it was just so much fun with everything. We would play uh, in the evenings. All of the families would come out and we would play one, two, three, red light, or we would play mm -hmm. hopscotch. 
we would do all kinds of games at night where we had, uh, well, just prior to nighttime because when that light came on, we had to be in the house. When the street light came on, we had to be home in our place. Um, but just knowing that what we did during that time was very, uh, a lot of fun. And we would love to go, like Fred has said, to the Wholesome Bakery on Christmas because that mm -hmm. was a, a gift for us. And, you know, with eight girls and uh, mom and dad, that was a uh, food that we could just have so much fun with. And we would always want some more of that uh, buttered uh, bread. Mm -hmm. um, other things in there, I, I graduated from Middleton High School in 71. I was a majorette uh, in junior high school, and when I got to high school, um, the first year I was a majorette. The second year I was speech and twirlers. Uh, we, I learned to, the majorettes had to go and learn how to twirl a baton. And we went to this place on Kennedy Boulevard. I can't think of the young man who taught us how to twirl batons, but I used to do it all, fire baton, you name it, I was doing that. Um, after that, um, we had so much fun just about playing four square. We used to love to do that. And then my dad would bring this wood, um, piece of wood uh, over to the house and we would do springboard jumping <laughs> off of it, which was dangerous, but we didn't, we didn't see it because one would uh, stand on the bottom and the other one would have to jump up and, and we mm. fly up in the air. The other is skating. Skating was a thing. You had to have uh, your Union 5 skates and you had to have a key. And you always put that key on a piece of string and tie it around your neck because that was like the key to everything. And we would uh, skate all the way to College Hill because College Hill had a little uh, square that we could ride around, which was where the office was. And every Christmas, that's what we did with our, our skates. We would skate around that uh, office. And by the time we got home, our eyelids were filled with dust, <laughs> where we would just say, boy, you look so weird with all that dust on your eye, eyelids. But also, um, just the mere fact of knowing your neighbors was so important. Uh, as <coughs> Juanita uh, said earlier, we lived in a, uh, it was three units that we really had a lot of fun with, with the neighbors. And we were very close. My dad had a car and he would take people wherever they needed to go, if they needed to buy groceries or whatever. Um, and that's about it. I can remember well, we're, so much. We're, go we're going to come back. Okay. And, and something that I, I wanted to say, too, a lot of our parents and grandparents grew up in the country. I know my grandparents did. They yeah. grew up in Monticello. And yeah. we had a, a chicken coop in the backyard. We lived on 20th Avenue. So we never had to buy eggs. We always had eggs. And every now and then we'd have one of those chickens too. <laughs> I can remember my grandfather, cause they would ring the necks. Mm. And I just, I couldn't watch that. I mean, it was, and then when, and when the neck finally would come off, the chicken would be running around without a head <laughs> until finally, but the chicken was good. You know, I enjoyed that part. Uh, when Easter came, we had plenty of eggs to color because we had a chicken coop. And every I think about it every time I go to Ebor City and I see the chickens walking around Ebor City, <laughs> and I said, that, that's nothing new to me. I grew up with chickens uh, in our backyard. So Ellen, let me come back to you because I know there are some other uh, friends and neighbors that you had a lot of uh, memories with, and, and who were some of those people? Well, in my neighborhood, um, there was Dr. Davis across the street, which was the black family. My mother, uh, Ed uh, Passanella Morang and Edward Morang, it was just two of us blacks in the neighborhood. Everybody else was Spanish. And um, so we would, uh, all of our friends were in the homes. So we would have to go that way toward the homes to go to 
junior high school as well as high school. But I do remember um, how clean it was. And we would, my mother would make us get up and clean on Saturdays. And we would go to our friend's house that lived in the Belmont Heights area um, homes. And before they could come out and play, they had to clean up. And we would all pitch in. Well, you take the kitchen and we would take the bathroom. And we did all of that. All of, It was four of us. Belinda McBride and uh, my sister Artes Morang Newkirk and um, Darcina uh, Douglas. And we, would, we couldn't go anywhere until we did all our cleaning. So instead of just one person cleaning, everybody helped. It was a community thing. And I remember um, they would come over in our, our area and we would put a big foursquare in the street made with, with sand. And we would play foursquare because back then we didn't have a lot of cars coming through that area. And then when the cars come, we pull over to the side and wait till they move and get back out there and play four square. Had a wonderful time. And, and with Patsy, with the Girl Scout cookies, we had a wagon and we would walk from 18th Street, where we live, all the way to Jackson Heights, pushing that wagon, selling cookies, knocking on the doors, because she already had her family. <laughs> so we would put the cookies in the wagon and we would sell those cookies. And we walked and knocked on those doors, and we were safe and with no problem. We sold all our cookies and came back all proud with our money and whatnot. And it, it was just a wonderful experience in Belma Heights. I cannot think of any, any tragedies that happened, no shootings, no, no drugs, none of that. We, it was a clean, wonderful, happy um experience where everybody looked out for everybody. Well, I, I can remember also uh, one place that, w that I was taught, don't go over there, don't go even go near that place, mm -hmm. and that was the rabbit foot. <laughs> the rabbit foot on Lake Avenue. <laughs> Stay away from the rabbit foot. A lot of bad things happen in there, and I think that's, that's why I never really became a drinker because I was so scared of going near the rabbit foot, and I knew that was the bar, and that's where a lot of bad things happen. But, uh, you know, the, the other thing that I can remember is, as you've talked about, Foursquare and Dodgeball, because and, none of us had a lot of money to buy a lot of these expensive mm -hmm. toys. We made games. My big thing was marbles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These kids today don't know what a marble is. Mm -hmm. And we all had marbles. Yeah. And you could win other children's marbles if yeah. you got pretty good. And, you know, the toy, that was the special marble. That was the one, I got a toy, and I'm going to mm -hmm. knock your marble out of the ring and win your marbles. Mm -hmm. Patrick, give me some more memories of, of Belvin Heights. Well, what I was thinking here, oh, you. What, we, <laughs> what I was thinking as we were talking about the band, how, how we were, our parents kept us busy and involved. And that was like from the Girl Scouts to the band, mm -hmm. the majorettes. And I remember the Lily White Parade. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the, the, every, 29th Street. Yeah, every year. And I think it was around Easter time. That's what made me think about it. Mm -hmm. So that was another thing. So we would, that was another activity that kept us involved. So, of course, you had already practiced for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had your things that you had learned from school with the band and your instruments. And I remember the teachers that were so involved with us from um, <clears throat> elementary school, Mrs. Martinez where they had the cleaners. Her and her husband had the cleaners on 21st and somewhere there. And I remember Mr. Bean, who was the band director at Young, mm -hmm. and very involved with us, as not just as band members, but as individuals, as people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Washington, our home economics teacher, was very uh, involved in us, as our development as young ladies and young men and Mrs. Mays, who then went on to retire and then was uh, 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 at the University of Tampa. She was uh, uh, did tours there. So those are people who were a part of our Belmont Height upbringing. 
Cynthia, what was it like growing up with eight sisters in Balboa Heights? You gave me a little bit of it, but hey, <laughs> I know you got a lot of stories you yeah. could tell. Oh, I got a lot I could tell. I, you know, I was the telltale. I used to tell on them when they did something wrong. Uh, and the older ones were already in college, so I didn't get much with them. But Shirley and Ollie, I used to tell on everything. Ruth and Evelyn, I used to tell when they were kissing boys <laughs> uh, because they, the boys had to leave at 9 o'clock. They would get there probably at 7 or 8, no, 7, and they had to leave at 8, 8 o'clock. But anyway, um, I just want to say this here. Patsy said something that really kindled my spirit about, um, and I forgot right now, but it <laughs> <laughs> Lily White. Uh, the Lily White. Oh, yeah. That was the most uh, rewarding thing that we did because we got to dress up and really sport whatever we had. And, and the thing about it is our, my parents, my mother, used to make all of our clothes. So that was something that we did all the time uh, every year. We look forward to all of those things. Um, and I, and I want to go back to Miss Willie. Miss Willie, she smoked that cigar, but she would chew on that cigar on one, thing, on one side and be telling you, all right, get in the house because I want to make sure you're safe after we got out of school. Other than that, um, my sisters, uh, we were just so close. And the best thing we did uh, with, uh, together was singing. Our parents, we would all get together and sing and dance. And I'm going to say this one thing. My older sister, uh, Betty, she came home from uh, FAMU, and she uh, was teaching us how to do the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but she wouldn't let mom and dad see her do that. But we used to have so much fun with her doing the dog. You know, Belmont Heights wasn't real close to Central Avenue, but all of us found our way to Central Avenue, whether we walked or caught a ride or rode the bus. Uh, that was the black downtown for us during the days of segregation. But the one thing that we could all walk to was College Hill Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And anytime I got a couple of nickels or dimes beyond what I needed for my lunch money, getting a milkshake at College Hill Pharmacy, yeah. that was the treat of the week <laughs> yeah. if I hadn't spent all my money because uh, they, they were just so good. And all of these memories uh, are just things that we have carried with us all of our lives. And the one thing all of us have said is that how other people in the neighborhood would look out for each other. Mm -hmm. All adults looked out for children. You were not afraid of 99% of the adults in Balvin Heights because they were all looking out for you. And uh, as we've said, if you did something you shouldn't have done, which was never anything major, your parents would know about it uh, as soon as they got home. So. These have been some great memories we've shared, and we want all of you to support the historic Belmont Heights uh, reunion that we're having May 4th, and each year we're going to have one. We want you to come out, support us. You're going to have a great time, and this has been a pleasure. We want to thank, again, the Howard W. Blake High School yes. administration, the students, uh, the teachers, everyone who has supported this project. Also, the Hillsborough County Public Library System is supporting us as we record the history of historic Belmont Heights.